Hello everyone. I am Sanjeev S. Bagne, TZT English, Jawahar Nodaya Vidyalaya, Koppal, Karnataka. I would like to present a lesson entitled The Sermon at Banaras of Class 10th. It is rightly said that all men, both wise and fools, will die. Death is common to all. It is universal. Death spares none. Those who are born must die sooner or later. Death is inevitable. Nobody can avoid dying. So, death is the ultimate truth. This lesson, the Sermon at Banaras, is written by Betty Renstock. Betty Renstock is an American writer. Betty Renstock was born in Shannon, Mississippi on September 3, 1927. After graduating valedictorian from Shannon High School, she went on to obtain her Bachelor of Arts degree from Mississippi College and later a Master of Arts from Mississippi University for women. She taught at the preschool level for several years and eventually she was able to pass her rich experiences on to others by teaching preschool teachers. Betty married Joseph Henry Barber on 23rd September, 23rd December, 1950. They were married for 61 years. Dear children, the mystery of life and death has always baffled us. Whenever we lose someone near and dear one to us, we are in grief, we are sad. This lesson reminds us that death is the ultimate truth. Every creature who is born must die one day. Death lays its icy hands on all. The mystery of death, the mystery of life and death always baffles us. When we lose someone near and dear one, we are sad. The lesson teaches us that death is the ultimate truth. This lesson is uh, about the early life of Gautama Buddha and his first sermon preached at Banaras. A woman who had lost her son in grave went to Buddha and pleaded him to bring her son back to life. Let us discuss and find out how Gautama Buddha taught the lady that the death is inevitable. The sermon at Banaras throws light upon the early life of Lord Buddha who was originally born as a prince in the royal family. On being exposed to the sufferings of the world, which he was earlier shielded from, he left his princehood and went in search of salvation, thus leaving all the worldly pleasures behind. Upon attaining spiritual awakening, he gave his first sermon in the city of Banaras hereby making a lady named Kisagotmi realize that men are mortal. Wise person will not grieve at what is bound to happen because it only enhances pain and suffering. Dear children, I would like to introduce the lesson to you all. Gautama Buddha was born in 563 BC. He was philosophical even in his childhood. He was sent for schooling at the age of 12. He married at the age of 16. They had a son. When he was 25 years old, one day when he was going for hunting, he caught sight of a sick man 
an aged man, a dead man's funeral procession, and a mock. He realized that this world is a home of sufferings. He left home in search of wisdom. He wandered for seven years and got enlightenment. This lesson forms the central idea, forms the theme of the story. The theme of this story is, it is the story of an unfortunate woman, Kisagotmi. She had lost her only one son. In her grave, she carried the dead body of her son from one place to another. In the end, she came to Lord Buddha. She needed the medicine that could cure her son. Buddha asked her to bring a handful of mustard seeds from a house where no one had lost a child, a husband, or parent, or a friend. Isa Gautami did not find a house where some beloved one had not died in it. She thought to herself that it was the fate of mankind. Death is inevitable. Nobody can avoid dying. The world is afflicted with death and decay. The wise do not grieve. He who has overcome all soon will become free from sorrow and be blessed. Dear children, while reading the lesson, you may come across the difficult words and in order to help you to understand the meaning of the difficult words and understand the lesson better, the words are given to you people. And I, I, I plead each one of you to go through the word meanings and understand them in the context of the lesson. Dear children, I would like to tell you the brief summary of the lesson, the Sermon at Banaras. Gautama Buddha was born in 563 BC. He was born in a royal family. He was a prince. His name was Siddhartha Gautama. At the age of 12, he was sent away for schooling. He studied all the secret Hindu scriptures. He returned after four years. At the age of 16, he married a princess. They had a son. For 10 years, the couple led a happy life. Siddhartha had been shielded from the sufferings of the world. He was not exposed to the sufferings in the world. However, when he was 25 years old, Siddhartha saw a sick man, then an aged man, then a funeral procession, and finally he came across a monk begging for alms. This was his first encounter with the harsh realities of life. These sights made him so sad that he decided to renounce the worldly pleasures. He left his family and went out into the world to seek spiritual knowledge, to find a solution to the existing problems. Siddhartha Gautama wandered for seven years in search of wisdom and truth and spiritual knowledge. Finally, he sat down under a people tree to meditate. He ought to stay there until he got enlightenment. After seven days, Gautama got enlightenment. He named the tree as the Bodhi tree, that is, the tree of wisdom. He became known as the Buddha, which means enlightened or the awakened. He began to teach and spread his knowledge, spread his message of wisdom and truth. He became known as the Buddha, the meaning of which is the enlightened. Buddha gave his first sermon at Banaras. It is the holiest of places 
on the banks of ganges his first his first sermon reflects reveals shows his wisdom about one inscrutable kind of suffering that is death here the buddha tells about the universality of death which is inevitable and cannot be escaped a lady named kisa gotmi had a son one day her only son died she wanted her child should become alive again she wanted some medicine to bring her son back she carried the dead son to the neighbors and asked them to give her son's life back she requested them to give them the medicine which could bring her son back to life people called her mad some laughed at her some people made a mockery of her some people told that she was out of her senses at last she came across a man he advised her to meet the buddha she approached buddha with a request to give her medicine so that her only son could live again after deep thought the buddha asked her to bring a handful of mustard seeds but there was a condition she must bring it from a house where no one had died he sagot me went from door to door to get the mustard seeds she found the mustard seeds in every home but she could not find a home where nobody had died by evening she was so tired and so sad as she wandered a lot went to the different places asking for the medicines to save her son's life she came and sat under the street lights she saw the lights of the city soon there was a darkness of the night everywhere the darkness reigned everywhere now she considered the fate of man now she realized that the death is inevitable no one can escape it death is must for all it spares none she was so selfish to have thought about herself only she understood that it was not only she who had lost her son but there are innumerable people in the world who had also lost their dear and near ones she understood that life of the human beings life of mortals is like flickering of the lights they become on and off in the same way our life is also very short and very painful everyone who takes birth has to die the vessel made by the potter is not permanent it has to break one day in the same way the ripened fruit is in the danger of falling how long will a ripened fruit remain on the tree it is always in the danger of falling similarly everyone has to die sooner or later today or tomorrow that spares none a father cannot save his son a relative cannot save his relation everyone grieves when someone dear dies but grieving cannot bring the dead back to life so death and sufferings are unavoidable she came back to buddha and asked for his blessings the buddha in his sermon told her that our life is brief troubled and painful the wise persons do not grieve as they know the truth weeping does not bring peace to the mind 
on the other hand a person's pain becomes greater by grieving his body also suffers one who has learned to control one's grief shall have the peace of mind that person is blessed who has overcome his sorrow dear children after having gone through the summary of this lesson i would like to enlighten you about buddha's early life also gautama buddha was born as a prince he was named siddhartha gautama at the age of 10 he was sent away for schooling he studied hindu sacred scriptures he was married to a princess at the age of 16 he had a son 10 years 10 years of his married life were spent in royal luxuries he was not exposed to the sufferings of the world at the age of 25 he chanced upon a sick man then an aged man then a funeral procession and finally he saw a monk begging for alms these sights moved him so much that he gave up the luxuries of royal life he set out in search of enlightenment after wandering for 7 years finally he meditated under a fig tree enlightened after 7 days he renamed the tree as the bodhi tree it was the tree of wisdom he became known as the buddha the meaning of which is the awakened or the enlightened one buddha the buddha preached his first sermon at banaras the holy city on the ganges dear children i would like to brief you something about another character in the story that is kisa gautmi kisa gautmi had a son and her only son had died she was deeply grieved and painful she wanted her son back she carried her dead son to all her neighbors she asked them for medicine the people thought that she had lost her senses she was mad people laughed at her at last a man advised her to go to sakyamuni that is the buddha she went to him and requested to give some medicine that could bring back life to her son dear children i hope you have gathered some details from the lesson and i would like to consolidate your understanding of the story the lesson by giving you some of the focus points of the story the following are the focus points of the story i request you to pay attention to these focus points gautama buddha was born a prince he was named siddhartha gautama he was married at the age of 16 and enjoyed the royal luxuries for 10 years he had a son up to the age of 25 he was shielded from the sufferings of the world the sight of a sick man then an aged man and a funeral procession shocked him finally he saw a monk begging for alms he gave up royal legs pleasures and set out to seek enlightenment he wandered for 7 years 
and finally sat down under a fig tree in meditation. Enlightenment came to him after seven days. He renamed the fig tree the Bodhi tree or the tree of wisdom. She was known as the Buddha or the awakened or the enlightened one. The Buddha preached his first sermon at the holy city of Benares on the river Ganges. Kisagotmi had a son and her only son had died. She had lost her senses and carried the dead boy to all her neighbors. She asked them for medicines to cure him. She prayed the Buddha to give such medicine that night to cure her son. The Buddha asked her to bring a handful of mustard seeds from a house where no one had died. She went from house to house and had no problem in getting a handful of mustard seeds. However, she did have a problem with finding a house where no one had not died. She considered the fate of men and realized that she was selfish in grief. Then she understood that death is common to all. It is inevitable. And those who are born must die. Surrendering all selfishness leads to immortality. All earthen pots end in being broken. The world is afflicted with death and decay. He who has overcome all sorrows will become blessed and enlightened one. So, we should not grieve. If we grieve, then our pain becomes greater. So our body also suffers. So Gautam Buddha gives the universal message that we have to accept the death. We should embrace death. Because death spares none. And we cannot escape death. So dear children, these are some of the focus points of the story. To add more to your understanding, I would like to give you some more focus points of the story. This lesson tells us about the life of Gautama Buddha, who was born in a royal family as a Siddhartha. Once he saw a funeral procession and a monk begging for alms. These sights moved him a lot and he decided to become a monk and started moving in search of enlightenment. He started meditation under a people or fig tree and after seven days he got enlightenment and he became known as the Buddha, the awakened or the enlightened. He preached his first sermon at Banaras. Once a woman came to him requesting to bring her dead son back to life. Gautama Buddha asked the lady to bring a handful of mustard seeds from a house where there had been no death. The lady moved from house to house, but she could not find a single house where no one has lost a child or husband or parent or a friend. Then she came to know that death is common to all and it is the ultimate truth. Dear children, these focus points must have helped you to understand the lesson better. And in order to enhance your understanding of the lesson, the multiple choice questions are given to you. I request all of you to go through multiple choice questions and questions are all followed by answers also. Please verify the answers. 
13 questions are given so please go through these questions and some value based questions are also given to you and value based questions are the personal losses are a part and parcel of life instead of wailing on them we should move on in life this message of gautama buddha has become more relevant in modern times do you agree with it the value points that you have to incorporate in your answers are no use crying over the loss maintain calm compose yourself and face the truth and move on modern times are hard and testing time stress dimazing so learn to be very strong and overcome the difficult situation the second question for you a little help and guidance to those who are experiencing grief may help to understand and grief and overcome grief it is a big relief for the grieving person if a support and care are extended to them explain citing examples from the chapter the sermon at banaras the value points given to you are gautama buddha helped kisa gautami to understand that grief and sorrows are with everyone death is inevitable and common to all he who seeks peace should draw out the arrow of lamentation complaint and grief and the third question for you is the teachings of great persons enable us to face even the most challenging problems of life how does the lesson the sermon at banaras support this the value points that you should include in your answers are through gautam buddha's teaching we learn that world is afflicted with the death and decay no use lamenting and grieving learn the lesson to maintain our composure and face the situation calmly joys and sorrows go hand in hand acceptance is the way to acquire peace so dear children these questions will surely help you to learn some morals great lessons from this story question answers are also given to you so i would like you people to go through these question answer question answers and then i would like to give you a small task in the lesson some old words are used archaic words are used or there are some utterances which are not in use now like mar give the medicine for thy child is a repaired to the buddha kinsmen pray tell me there was no house but someone had died in it these are some of the old utterances or words they are called archaic words or utterances and you have to rephrase each of the archaic words and utterances with their modern expressions for example the meaning of mark in the lesson is listen attentively likewise you have to write the modern expressions for the archaic words given in the table dear children after understanding the lesson completely with the help of your friends i would like you people to dramatize the episodes from the story so having paid attention to me having been so patient to me in attaining this lesson 
I am very much thankful to you for watching this beautiful presentation and I hope I have been able to reach you all. Thank you very much dear children.